What's up, Trevor? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. This is Run the World, Season 1, Episode 8. So listen, this episode is all about the bachelorette party, right? So we've got two different things going, well, a couple of different things, but... We start off the episode, we see the ladies are in a car, we have all of the usual suspects except for Whitney, including her bridesmaid from out of town, and she has a whole, well her maid of honor I should say, and she has a whole night of wonderful fun games and activities planned. First, they went to, you know, an overpriced, you know, Chinese food restaurant, you know, that you pay three, four hundred dollars for your check by the time it comes. Then they're supposed to go to the club where she got them bottle service and a VIP area um, from a group on off of um, the internet. Then they were supposed to be spending the night at the um, at the um, Marriott Marquis down to Times Square. So we pick up with after dinner before the club. They're in the car complaining because they were like the food is overpriced. I don't understand paying that much money for Chinese food. Sunday was like I think or Sunny was like I think that might be a little racist and, sh and um, Ella was like I feel the same way about soul food or anything else. Like I don't understand paying that much money for some food. Like I that's just ridiculous. Whitney is texting Sun Sunday Sunday. Because Whitney has decided that she gonna tell her man. Now I misunderstood. I thought Sunday was telling her not to say number. Maybe Sunday was encouraging her to come clean. I personally feel like die with that thought. Like again, like I said in my my review last week, sometimes you're not clearing your conscience. To help anything. It's just because you need to get it off your conscience. And sometimes getting it off your conscience. Ends up hurting the person that you said you didn't want to hurt. But neither here nor there. She's over at Sunday's apartment. He shows up. And he was like what are we doing here like. And she was like this is um, Sunday's. You know he's like I thought Sunday moved in with you know. Oh boy and she got rid of her apartment. And she was like well she moved in with him. But she didn't get rid of the apartment. He was like mm mm. Don't be including me. Like, I don't want to be the house husband. I don't want a peach. I don't want an apple. Whatever it is that they hold. I don't want to be on the inside business. Because I hang out with this dude. Me and him cool. I don't want to know the secrets that y'all keep it from each other. Okay? While this is going on, the girls are like, where's Whitney? Where's Whitney? The only person that seems to know where Whitney is is Sunday. And she's like, oh, she had a little upset stomach. She'll meet us there. She's on her way. The ladies go to the club, honey, they can't get in the club. Uh, the maid of honor got this whole two-for-one coupon thing that she said she didn't pay for a Groupon. The bouncer at the door was like, I don't know what you're talking about, but you can't get up in here. We at capacity. Mind you, it's people walking all up and out of there. So then um, Renee tries to go over there and was like, you remember us? We, You know, you were the bouncer at the Soldier Boy party. You remember us? And he was like, nope. He was like, ma'am, y'all really should, you know, y'all are... Um, Y'all um, y'all really should, you know, you middle-aged women, you shouldn't be out here embarrassing yourself trying to get into a club. And, of course, mind you, they're, like, in their early 30s. So, of course, they're looking at him like middle age, Like, what the hell are you talking about? And, they, you know, at that point, the maid of honor is still arguing. Renee and Ella are like, let's go. Like, what we're not about to do is further embarrass ourselves by begging to get into a club that don't none of us really want to go to. Whitney ain't even here. Now, they got this whole scavenger hunt thing going on, and Sunday is really getting into the scavenger hunt. I think one of the questions was asking a random stranger for a condom. He's talking about something. I don't have an extra condom, but I could use one. I don't mind finding one to use one with you. She was like, ill. So, after all of this, they're ready to go to the hotel, and Renee is like, well, we're not doing the stand at the Marriott down to the Times Square. So, she booked them a room at another little, you know, foo-foo, you know, foo-foo, um hotel somewhere else child so while all of this is going on Whitney is at the apartment and she comes clean she tells him that she slept with somebody else and of course he is giving her the what and he tells her he was like so basically you're telling me this to clear your conscience like do you feel any better and she was like no I really feel I feel worse he was like oh okay well you should so, you know, I mean, he's reacting the way you would expect him to react. Like, his fiance just told him, I have slept with another man, like, weeks before their wedding. And so, his immediate response was, oh, my gosh, what am I going to tell everybody? And she was like, what do you mean, what are you going to tell everybody? Like, I'm not calling off the wedding. He was like, aren't you, though? Like, isn't that, isn't that what we're doing right now? 
And so she was like, no, not really. And so then that evolves into a whole argument. Um, he goes to the bathroom. She texts Sunday and said, listen, I'm still here. This is not going well. And I'm like, what did you think? Like, you thought you was going to tell him. He was going to say, oh, I understand. You were just trying to get some, you know, you were sowing your wild oats before the wedding. Okay, go have fun with your girlfriends. I see you back at the house. Like, you plan to tell him on the night of your bachelorette party thinking what exactly was going to happen. Now, while this is going on, we're at the um, hotel, and it seems like the only two people having a good time is uh, Sunday and the maid of honor. They made, you know, toilet paper bridesmaids gowns and, and all of these different things. They're dancing, and um, Sunday's boyfriend calls, and she don't want to answer the phone. She was like, I'm not doing it. I'm going to enjoy this time I have alone. Like, I am not entertaining him or his daughter. Love them both, but I'm having some me time tonight. So then... We see her and Renee actually start bonding. Now, remember, bond, remember, Renee can't stand the, the maid of honor. She can't stand her ass, okay? But she actually, they actually start bonding a little bit. And Renee lets her know what happened when, you know, with her, she quit her job. And how her boss quit with her, walked out right behind her. And what ended up happening. And so she's encouraging her to reach out to the friend that she ran into at the bar to see if, listen, see if there's a job there. To see if, you know, there's, there's any anybody that can help her, you know, um, and so she does, she sends her a text, and then later on in the night, the friend responds with a, you know, I'll see if we got something, it wasn't a no, it wasn't a yes, but, you know, Renee was happy about it, now back over to the apartment, <laughs> again, they start arguing again, and, you know, it turns into, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Don't leave me, don't leave me, don't leave me. No, 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 no. I love you, I love you, I love you. And then they start having sex. Now, I knew when that happened that that was not reconciliation sex. That was hurt and angry sex. That was I love you sex. That might have even been goodbye sex. But it damn sure won't reconciliation sex. Well, when the sex was over... Whitney gets up thinking, oh, we good to go. She all, you know, looking at herself in the mirror with the afterglow. She comes out the bathroom. He dressed. And she was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's, what's going on here? Like, I thought we were good. We were going to kind of chill out and, you know, maybe go for round two, three, four, five. And she was like, he was like, you yeah, know, mm -mm. like, I need some time. I, I need some time. I need to think. I need to figure this out. And she was like, well... Like, when? Because we need to let people know what's going on with the wedding. He said, listen, you don't get to control this. I will call you. And he walks out. I was like, what did you... I don't know what you expected, Whitney. Like, really? Seriously? What did you expect? Now, while this is going on, Sunday's uh, stepdaughter then called. And... She answers the phone, and the stepdaughter basically, you know, she didn't stole her daddy's phone. And she just wanted to let her know that she missed her, and she loved her, and all that good stuff. And, of course, that sort of melts her heart. That melts her heart a little bit. Um, Ella is in her feelings because she ain't heard from old boy since she put him out of her apartment after he told her she was too good for that job. And so she sends him a text or a voice message or whatever, basically telling him, listen, you were right. I'm sorry. Everything you said was right. And I put you out my apartment and I responded the way I responded because all you were doing was saying what I already knew. And you were making me face a reality that I didn't want to see. And so I apologize for that. So he ends up coming to the hotel. She goes downstairs so they can have a face-to-face -face conversation. And they decide that they are officially back together. Um, and of course, Renee ain't trying to hear none of that, child. Renee ain't feeling it. And then Sunday ends up... Um, the little girl calls back and Sunday ends up talking to her again and um, she ends up talking to her man and he tells her, he says, listen, I want you to go ahead and stay at the, you know, stay at the hotel another night. I'll call the front desk. I'll pay for the room. I'll take care of it. You work on your paper. Um, you know, you do a lot for us and you need time to focus and you need some space. Now, mind you, he don't know she got a whole apartment that she can go to, okay? But it was sweet and it showed that he got it and he understood where she was coming from and where her frustrations were. So, I could appreciate that. 
Now, we had a few other things that fell into this night. We had some edibles, honey. Renee didn't call her connect. And then it got them some weed and some edibles. So, everybody is running around high now at this point, okay? Whitney shows up and she is a basket case. And she tells the ladies... Oh, I'm sorry. The old white lady showed up with the sex toys. Like, it was a whole lot going on on this night, okay? But Whitney actually shows up. And, um... I'm sorry. Ella's mad sent her... He sent her one of her old articles and said... I just want to remind you of the woman I fell in love with. So she could read, like, one of her old articles. And that's what started the conversation. Anyway. Whitney... For the exception of the maid of honor, everybody in the room knew what had, had that Whitney had slept with that dude. Um, so Whitney tells them that she thinks the wedding is off and she's upset. She's crying. And so, of course, they have that whole sister girl moment where they hugging on her and loving on her. They end up falling asleep. And at the end of the episode, we see Ella get up out the bed, open up her laptop and type chapter one. So she's trying to get back to who she was and, and, and get back to writing and being that deep, thoughtful writer that she once was. So that was the episode, y'all. I'm assuming we're going to get like 10 episodes. Generally, um, first run shows like this get a 10 episode commitment. We're on episode eight. So I feel like we're going to get like two more episodes. I don't feel like we're going to find out. I feel like whether the wedding happens is going to be the cliffhanger. I don't know. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in those comments. Peace.